Hello everybody and welcome to the European SharePoint Conference How-To Sessions. My name is Robert Funcina and coming from Slovenia. This is my second year as a SharePoint Server MVP. I am founder and leader of the Slovenian SharePoint Users Group. In my free time I try to learn new stuff, I do some diving, I do sports, but basically all of my work and off work is more or less dedicated to SharePoint. And just for your information, this is also for my first video recording, so just bear with me. So, before we can create any advanced search queries with keyword query language in SharePoint 2014, we must understand how things are organized inside SharePoint. For this, search schema is responsible for it and it defines how and what content needs to be crawled or indexed, what properties of that content need to be indexed, which aliases can be used to query the data, how content properties can be used in search queries or refinements, and the most important contents, concepts that you must understand here in the search schema is uh, how are crawled properties, are managed properties related to each other, which we will definitely uh, explain in the following slides. One more thing to mention here is that only in SharePoint 2014 you can you can define or you can set the search schema at the three different levels at the search service application, at the site collection level or at the site level. So this is actually important because you can now uh, you can now delegate search administration to your site collection administrators. Crawled properties. Crawled properties are metadata such as author, title, subject that are extracted from the document during crawls. Crawled properties could actually be defined as columns that are indexed and propagated to crawled properties. They cannot be created in search service application or search setting pages, but you can add them, but you can add your custom crawled properties via the object model. Crawl properties are organized in different categories based on where uh, based on where these crawl properties are coming from. For example, if the indexed column was from the BCS connection, then this crawled property would be in the business data category. You have some different uh, uh, categories of the crawled properties. So uh, let's say you will find you will find a basic category, internal category, but the most common one when using crawled properties in SharePoint 2014 is actually the SharePoint one. Managed properties are metadata that can if uh, that can appear in the refined searches. To make a crawled property available for refined search queries, you, you must map the crawled property to a managed property. So managed properties can have a large number of settings or attributes, and these attributes determine how the contents are shown in the search results. The search schema contains the attributes on managed properties and the mappings between crawled properties and managed properties. As seen on this slide, managed property represents a possible one-to-many mapping between crawled property and a managed property. In this example, we can actually we can see the most uh, common one, which is uh, mapping between uh, crawled properties modified by, created by, and author, with, which are all mapped to the author managed property. Each managed manage property has various settings that will define how it will be used in search. These settings can be set at different levels in the search schema, in the search service application, site collection, or the web, uh, web, uh, le web level. Managed property settings are really important because they define in what, uh, in what way this managed property can be used in. So, for example, if managed property is not set as a queryable, you cannot execute keyword query language query against that managed property. And, for example, if managed property is, net, is not set as refinable, then you cannot use this managed property as a refinement as a refiner in the refinement web part. Managed property type uh, can have a specific data type. 
This type will determine how the managed property can be used in the queries and other places in the SharePoint UI. If a managed property is propagated automatically by the search service application, the data type will be defined based on that data type of that crawled property. If you create your own managed property, then you can also set the data type for this managed property. The data type will then define what kind of operators you will be able to use in your keyword query language and how managed property, if defined as definable, will be displayed in the, refiner, in the refinement web part. For example, we can see that author, which is a text type, is displayed differently than the modified day, which is a date time data type. Automatic property configuration. As you can see here, uh, this, uh, these columns were actually propagated automatically by the search crawler. When a search crawler propagated a column to a crawled property, it, it used its, its properties for the, um, for the name of this crawled property. For example, we have uh, two columns here. One is of type choice and the other one is based on managed metadata and both are uh, both are name, named differently. So the first one is OWS underscore Q underscore choices underscore status which is the name of the field and the other one is OWS underscore tax ID underscore category which is a, a field name or the column name in SharePoint. So, when the crawler or the search service application propagates these uh, crawled properties in the managed properties, it actually uses the naming convention which is defined as the column name, the, t the OWS or the, uh, the type of the column and then the data type of the column. So, for example, for our status column, the managed property would then be status OWS and choices or CHCS. And for the managed, um, managed metadata, it's OWS tax ID and the name of the column, which in this case is category. All spaces are removed from column names. So, key, keyword query language. How can you create new queries? Using uh, keyword query language, you can construct your queries with, uh, with manage properties in your, uh, to, to narrow your search results. Property searches can never have any spaces between the properties, property name and the column and the property value. So, in first case where I have author colon Roby, I would actually get results where Roby was content editor or the content author. But in this case where um, I, I, I specified author colon space and Roby, I would actually get um, I would actually not get the same results or not, uh, not the, the um, not, uh, results would not be filtered by the author Robby. Keyword query language property operators are colon which actually uh, defines that uh, it has two matches, uh, equals uh, matches values from the property values, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal to. Here you actually have to know what kind of uh, managed property or what kind of data type this managed property is so that you can use the correct one. Keyword query language operators for co complex queries are boolean operators and not or or proximity operators, ranking operators, and synonym operators, let's say word in this case. So, now we are going to do a short demo and uh, we are going to show you how you can use this in practice. Hi, so 
for this demos I'm going to use our SharePoint conference web page which was created for the SharePoint conference that we held each year here in Slovenia so for the search I'm just going to show you a few things here that you can and that you can use in your advanced search queries I use the search box just to get to the search results page that I'm going to use later on but first of all I would like to show you what we will be searching on and how this uh, metadata and uh, mensh metadata uh, sorry so the mensh properties and the crawl properties are related to each other here we have a content uh, document library where we store the session and the speaker uh, content uh, speaker pages which are based on the predavanya and predavatel uh, content types. Each of these content types has uh, some a set of the side columns which I uh, will show you in uh, just a moment where you can actually then find the um, the crawled and the managed properties. So if you go for example here at the session level you will see that the field name is a session level so if you go to the search schema and we'll go to the search schema of the uh, uh, search uh, service application and if we actually go to the crawled properties here we will and type the level we will see that we have a uh, two crawled properties levels but only this one is used so the oversert tax id session level and we can also see that also text ID session level was mapped to the pro managed property OVS text ID session level. So why is this important? Because if we use this managed property and we try to do a search uh, based on the uh, session level, we can actually define it as a, let's say, um, or this way we can define that we would like to see all of those sessions that only has a level of 200 so if we execute this query we should see the um, the specified uh, the specified sessions and if we would like to let's say for example also use the speaker uh, session or the speaker managed property we would actually uh, try to find the speaker column which is in this case Predavatel and we can also see that it is mapped the crawl property is mapped to the ma managed property OVS tax ID Predavatel and if we would like to execute this query we can go in the search box and we can paste the uh, the managed property name here and the uh, uh, um, and the uh, um, value that we would like to search for. So in this case if I execute this query I can only get uh, two uh, sessions one uh, but it actually goes with one session one is for the Slovenian uh, site and one is for the English site. So if you would like to let's say change this query and then execute free session level of 300 and the uh, uh, speaker of Ravi we can see that we'll get different set of results and this is a mailbox SharePoint site site mailbox uh, session that we uh, prepared for the conference so what if we want to what if we would like to use the operators as we said before boolean operators we can type here in here and operator between the two managed properties and their values so if I type this in and execute we will see that we actually get the same results as we did before and now so it actually doesn't matter if you type in and or not but if you type here the or then we'll get the results that are of session level 300 or where the speaker is actually Robert Roby so you can see that with the que keyword query language you can define or you can refine your search queries actually pretty easy so for for example if you would like to now take some different um, different search 
uh, execute different search queries we can also use some other properties or some other uh, managed properties and for example I know that if I want to get just the uh, just the let's say sites that uh, I have in the, uh, in um, in this um, uh, in this um, site collection I can actually type STS and underscore web in this case then I won't get the content but I'll just get the webs that are in my search index so if, for example if I would like to to get all of site collections that are in my site index I can class I can type content class colon STS site and we can see here that I only got the the two site collections that are on this server and one is uh, SharePoint days and the other was is for the Slovenian SharePoint users group so how can we actually help each other out with this so if we would like to get just the specific URL depth of this uh, web site of these sites we can also type URL depth of let's say uh, one for example and now we will only get the all of those sites that are the first level sites under the root uh, root site or the root of the site collection um, so let's say for example we just uh, do one more here uh, if you would like to use let's say editor and find all of uh, all of the documents that were edited by uh, one user you can also type in the editor is or uh, you can see the um, manage property uh, name the uh, field type is user type and we can type in the name of the user who edited or who authored the content and if I execute this content we'll see that we can get the um, that we can get all of those content that was um, that was edited by by Urshka what you can also do with this is uh, that you can um, that you can find out what your managed properties are uh, if you just open the developer toolbars in your Internet Explorer and if you go then to the debugger and open the search uh, search uh, where is it now okay so if you open item default JS which is uh, display template for the uh, for the uh, items that are displayed in search results we can see here that we can actually get all of the managed property mappings so for example title managed property is mapped to a title name so if you would like to get uh, file extensions for example or all of those documents that are of specific file extension we can go in here and see what this uh, uh, how file extension managed properties name is copy that and if we enter it in the search box and let's say uh, type in the PDF and execute this query we'll, uh, we'll get all of those documents that are of type PDF in your search index so if now you get the I hope now that you get the idea how you can type or how you can create your search queries and uh, we'll just wrap it up so just to finish up here uh, this was the short demo of uh, keyword query language and I hope you got an idea how you can help yourself with with uh, creating some advanced uh, KQL queries so I would really like to thank you uh, for watching uh, my how-to session if you have any additional questions you can always send me an email to the address specified here so it's roby at compass-xnet.si thank you and goodbye